Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Blood of Zeus, episode 2. So, yeah, we are back here with Blood of Zeus, and I'm very interested to see where this goes. Episode 1 ended with a really interesting uh, twist, I guess you could call it. But there is a lot of information that we also got in the first episode that is definitely going to push forward and make things interesting for sure. Um, first off, our main character is a demi-human, uh, though he doesn't know it. He is the son of Zeus and this human woman, and is kind of looked down upon. He's seen as a bastard by most of the people in, in his town and whatnot, um, because of the mother and her situation and not knowing who the father is and whatnot. Um, he's not a bastard, we know, but he's seen that way. Um, so we take that, and he's just, he, he's looked down upon, but he has a couple people he's close with, his, his mother, and then there's this uh, old guy in town and stuff. Um, but one day kind of life is upset as these demons come to town being chased by uh the army military force whatever you want to call them the soldiers and he ends up getting involved in it he ends up getting involved in the fight and ends up doing pretty well um however he has to go at the end of this to go get something from the mountain and it's revealed that the old guy was actually Zeus all along. Uh, so we find out that these demons as well are members of a cult who have eaten the flesh of a titan. Uh, the gods managed to, or not, not a titan, a giant rather. See, the gods were fighting the titans and managed to defeat them, but before they were defeated completely, uh, one of the titans created the giants. Um, now the giants came into play, and the gods had to defeat them and everything. They ended up working with a couple of the giants to take out the rest of the others. Uh, one of the giants ended up being washed ashore elsewhere and people started worshiping it started eating its flesh and became demons because of it uh just to kind of shortly summarize everything <laughs> it's it's greek mythology for sure and there are a couple people noting in the comments of the last video about just it's always fun to see different shows and movies and stuff about greek mythology and it's like yeah i, I talked about last time a couple of the things I like, like uh, I have the movie Troy, I, I play the game Hades and whatnot. Like I, I've always kind of enjoyed Greek mythology. I listen, I, I love the song uh, Cult of Dionysus. Um, there's a lot of great stuff with Greek mythology, a lot of great stories, a lot of great uh, uh, just everything really. There's media of all kinds in relation to it. And I like seeing different portrayals and different interpretations. And so far, this one, with its first episode, was pretty good. But I definitely have to wait to see exactly where it goes. Um, but yeah, uh, we will definitely find out more as it goes along. But I'm very interested to see if our main character ends up having powers. I assume he's probably going to. But we'll have to see for sure. Um, but in the meantime, in the meantime, we're just going to get this started. Hope for the best with the second episode. And enjoy what we have. Um, so, yeah. When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, 
Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, most of this episode was kind of a explanation of our main character's, well, birth and everything. How he's the son of Zeus and whatnot. Basically how all of this went down, as well as the situation they're in and everything, minus the demons, which we found out about last episode. So, the mother was wed to a king. It was forced upon her. It wasn't her decision or anything, which was common in ancient uh, civilizations. A lot of times kings would just take on women that they fancied to be their wives a lot of times in ancient civilizations, they had many wives and concubines and whatnot as well. Um, so here we have this king. He fancied her, took her on um, as his wife. And he was really terrible. He was abusive and mean towards her and didn't really care about her at all. Just was using her for sex basically to create an heir to his kingdom to his throne um she started to notice there were some days where he would be nice though and eventually she put it together that that wasn't him that it was so different so opposed to what she had become used to with him that she knew noticed that the nicer version of her husband had to be a, a fake of some sort. So she told him to uh, come clean and everything, and he revealed to her, yeah, I'm Zeus, I'm the god of thunder. I, I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> and, I mean, he didn't say that, but you know what I mean. And he revealed everything to her, and... Hera found out as well. Hera's a jealous bitch. We know this from Greek mythology. And she, she does not take well to this kind of shit. So she wants to kill this woman. But we see that Zeus tries to hide it by having Apollo take his place there and everything. And he tries to hide it at first, but it doesn't go too well. She eventually does find out. And she sends the, these dream demons we found out about to uh, fuck with the king's mind, tell him, like, oh, you're going to have, your your wife here is going to have twins, but one of them is not going to be yours. And so once that's revealed, he's going, he's going to kill the one son that's not his. And although I don't think he really could tell necessarily, I, I guess he could maybe tell by the eye color. Um... I guess that makes sense, which is why he was checking the eyes. And so he's going to kill her, but she defends her son while Zeus is also fighting and everything. And the king is killed, and she's kind of ostracized because of this. And Zeus has to get her and uh, her one son out of there and hide them from Hera <laughs> and everything. Lest they continue to be... Uh, sought after to be killed um so yeah fun that that's that's a thing um and and she and she knew that this old guy was zeus the entire time they they had been hiding this though from the son who's now upset at finding all this out he's he hates zeus now because of all of this because of the way the way Zeus has done this all, which, I mean, fair enough, Zeus <laughs> never been dad of the year in any situation in Greek mythology. Um, another way that Disney's Hercules got things wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, Zeus has always been kind of fucked up. We know that. But we see that the demons are getting a lot more intense the one one of the 
one demon from the first episode that had escaped, um, one of the two that were there, goes off and gets reinforcements, including this uh, super demon, it's kind of like. Uh, we don't actually see too much detail of, the, of him, but he seems to lead the others, and it might be the original, maybe? Maybe? Um, but it's unclear. Um, but they attack and kill all of the, um, the, the female soldiers, uh, well, fellow soldiers and everything. And she manages to get away, but is being chased by this hound that they let out that is very much like Cerberus, but it can't be Cerberus, right? Unless, like, these demons have formed some kind of pact with Hades or something. Because... Cerberus guards the gates to Hades. That's that's how it works. What? So, it, it can't be Cerberus, right? Plus, Cerberus is also usually depicted as being a lot bigger than that, to be honest. But I don't know. It's like, what if it is? Or what if it's just some kind of other three-headed hound? It's like... I don't know. It's like it's unclear because it, it didn't say. But it's like I would think it couldn't be, but maybe it could. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, things are kind of getting more intense on that front, but also in terms of the character building and the story development, kind of like adding the depth and the layers and the the overall backstory to our main character. He has a sword now that was forged from this adamantium, um, or adamantine or whatever, uh, metal that he got from the top of the mountain. And he's now having to see that he's going to have to use it. <laughs> Um, he doesn't want to use it because Zeus made it for him and he wants to reject Zeus completely, even telling him to his face that it's like, I don't want to see you ever again. And completely fair. Completely fair. Um, like I said, we also saw Apollo and Hera, and we, we saw some of the other gods in the first episode during the flashback to the battle against the Titans and the Giants and all. Um, but we actually get to like really meet these two in this episode. So Hera, like I said, jealous bitch, just completely wants to take out anyone who Zeus has slept with or any illegitimate child or whatnot, because she wants Zeus all to herself. Um, we see her crows in this, or ravens or whatever. Um, I get crows and ravens mixed up. Um, I know, like, the difference between them is, like, a, there's, like, a pinion feather, I think it's called. Um, something like that. Um, I, 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 something like that, that you could tell the difference. But it, otherwise, they're very similar um, birds. Um, but either way, whichever one it is, we see her using them to watch over things even by the end of the episode. And she's, yeah, she's very beautiful in her design. Like, I love the designs of the characters in this. Um, they're not, they seem like very, uh, very, very classic designs for these gods, but also, like, modern versions of those classic designs in a way, if, if that makes any sense. Like, you see something like uh, the game Hades, and it's clear they're modern adaptions of the, of the gods and everything. Um, a lot of them are portrayed differently than how they might be portrayed in a lot of the Greek mythology. Like, uh, there's a lot of Greek mythology, for example, where Dionysus is portrayed more as, like, this bearded old man kind of guy. But in the game Hades, he's this big, buff, sexy dude. <laughs> um, and it's, like, it's, it, it, he's more clean-shaven, though he has a little bit of scruff on there. Um, long flowing hair and whatnot. It's a it's a, quite a different depiction than you normally see for the for the character for the god. Um, and in this, it's like they're very much classic designs, but again, just more modern, like adaptation, more modern takes on those classic designs. 
modern versions of those designs, but not completely modernized designs themselves, if that makes any sense, if I'm making any kind of sense at all here. Um, Hera is absolutely stunning. Like, and I would assume, I would hope she would be. And I, I, would, I would say that for any of them. Like, I, I would love, like, these ladies, the, these goddesses in Greek myth are supposed to be stunning. And the gods of Greek myth are supposed to be very big and buff and attractive as well. Like, th that's kind of how they've always been portrayed to, well, most of them, to some degree or another. We see that with Apollo as well. He, he's this very big, buff, attractive guy. Also, very glowy, which, yeah, glows like the sun. Um, and... It's mentioned that Apollo is also a illegitimate child, and it's like, I have heard that before, but I don't know the details about it. I, I don't know all of the details surrounding that. Um, but he mentions that to uh, the mother uh, back in the past when the affair with Zeus was going on and everything. Um, so yeah, that's... Uh, interesting and i wonder if they'll expand on that any because i i don't, again i don't know all the details about all of greek mythology there's re there's really a lot of different stories in greek mythology that even tell about the gods slightly differently um it, it's like a lot of mythologies out there it's a, a lot especially a lot of mythologies that were spread by word of mouth and all a lot um so there's a lot of differences between certain stories and whatnot and different kinds of depictions of the characters within the mythology. Um, I'm wondering how many others we're going to see. I know we're going to see Hermes at some point because I know he's voiced by Matt Mercer already. Um, but I would love to see like Aphrodite and Artemis and Dionysus and Demeter and whatnot. I, I would love to see a lot of these. Uh, we've seen Ares. Um, it would be cool to see uh, just so many of these. Poseidon and Hades being big ones, being the brothers of Zeus and everything. So those ones I would definitely love to see. Um, yeah, it's just... I like what they're doing with this, having our main character deny Zeus, though. Because it's going to allow him to be, well, one, more of himself as a character. going to allow him to forge his own identity outside of his parentage and whatnot, which is always good to see. But also, I, I think it just works for, like, basically giving a big uh, fuck you to Zeus because it's like, yeah, fuck you, Zeus. <laughs> because Zeus is... Oh, Zeus is just terrible. Like, he really is. L like, again, Disney's Hercules gave so many people a very false impression of what Zeus is like in Greek mythology. Um, honestly, it gave a very bad impression of what a, pretty much every god that's shown in that movie is like um, in Greek mythology. And it's a Disney movie. Obviously, it's not going to be accurate to Greek mythology almost at all. It just basically uses, uses character names and ideas and whatnot um, it, it's so saturated. <laughs> um, but that's going to happen. And, and I, I expect that kind of thing with that. But still, that's what a lot of people know those characters as, though. Because a lot of people won't have necessarily read a lot of these uh, Greek stories. And I, it, there's so many of them. I haven't even read anywhere near that many of them myself. Um... Like, the big ones that I've read are the Odyssey and the Iliad, of course. The two works by Homer there. Um, because, honestly, I think a lot of people have read those just because, you know, school. <laughs> a lot of schools will have their uh, students read those. Um, but also, I, I always really liked that kind of stuff. So I always really got into those stories and whatnot. Um, when I was younger, so that helped out too. But yeah, I, I really like that we're forging a separate identity for our main character from his parentage, and that he's going to become his own. 
he's going to come into his own in that regard. Um, we clearly have a main antagonistic force for this uh, series or season. I don't know if there's going to be another season or not, but um, it's clearly the demons. Hera is kind of like a background antagonistic force. <laughs> not really like the main, main enemy, unless... She ends up working with the demons, in which case, that could be very bad. But they seem to be more of the actual, like, major antagonistic force of the series so far. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see exactly where that goes. Um, but it's also going to be interesting to see where it goes with uh, Hera, especially because you know at some point... Our main character is going to have to leave that town, that village. So he's going to have to leave the protection of the cover uh, that Zeus had put up against Hera. So, yeah, that's fun. Um, I'm definitely into this, though. It's very exciting. It's, it, it, it's Greek mythology. To me. It's like, it's just cool. It's fun. It's interesting. It's it's really a good time. And, and I'm hoping you all are having a good time watching my reactions to it. So tell me in the comments below what you thought of episode two of Blood of Zeus. And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.